Hey, this is Rustin with Metal Holic Magazine, and with me, one of the metal gods himself, Ian Hill of Judas Priest. How are you doing today, man? Uh, I'm just fine. Uh, a bit of a cold, but other than that, I'm I'm fighting fit. <laughs> nice. And you guys are down in Costa Rica doing the South American part of the tour right now, I believe. That's right. Yeah. I got to tell you, it's something of an honor actually getting to talk to you right now because normally Glenn, KK, or you know Rob has done most of the interviewing over the years. So it's nice to get to talk yeah, with you. Yeah. <laughs> How much a change, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we get a different perspective. You're all, you've always sort of been the quiet one, sort of lurking in the background there. But you're the the original member of the band, going all the way back to 1969 when. You and Ken put it all together with Al and John and everybody else, so, you know. Yeah, that's right. Did you ever imagine, when you played that first show in March of 71, that here you would be, 40 years later, still Yeah, digging? I know, it, it's a long time ago, and uh, you, you never look that far in the future back then, you know, you just live from one day to the next, just uh, very, very happy to, uh, you know, to be able to play your music, you know, and... Um, like I say, if you'd have asked me then, no, I, I'd have said no. We would, at that time, although we had ambitions, you know, we were doing it basically for fun. So, um, you know, to, to 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 end up where we are now, you know, it's uh, if we'd have known then. So here we are, four decades later. You guys are out on your Epitaph uh, World Tour. Something of a final. Yeah, I don't know. Something of a final tour, although I know it's not really the end per se. It's just the end of all the major touring, correct? That, that's right. Yeah. Um, the fact that Rob put it really well the other day is it's like um, we just want to sort of extend the life of the band, you know, sort of a slow burn while we're going out with a big bang, if you know what I mean. It'll keep us going for uh, for a few years longer. Um, it, it, I mean, a, a, a full world tour takes probably the best part of two years, you know, especially this one. I mean, dates just keep on being added and added, you know. And it's just a bit of a complete onslaught from when you start, you know. You, I mean, we did Europe, and then we, you know, went to South America, then we come up to the States, and then we go to Japan, and then we go to Southeast Asia, and then Australia, you know. And it's just one after the other, you know. It's, just a, it's a very, very hard thing to do, especially when you, you're not spring chicken anymore, you know. <laughs> so we decided to... Uh, it's more of a slowing down process, you know. Um, we never intended to kill the band off at all, you know. There's still a lot of life in us, you know. It's just we're trying to extend it for as long as we can. Now, um, you guys are going to be kicking off the, the U.S. portion of the tour here in a, in a couple of weeks. And at the same time, you guys are also going to be releasing sort of a greatest hits album, The Chosen Few, which was actually interesting because other artists, many of the same caliber as Judas Priest, uh, pick the songs that went on the album. How did that whole project come about? That, I don't know how it came about. A, a record company came to us with the idea, you know, and uh, we thought, well, okay, if, if other people are willing to do that, you know, that's great. It's a great honor, you know, for people of that caliber to take time out and and, uh, and, and choose one of their favorite pre songs, you know. It's just great, you know, that, you, that your peers actually listen to what you do. And uh, like I say, it's very, very flattering for them to do it, and uh, we're very, very grateful for them. You know, uh, well, I haven't seen the final, the, the, the final set list yet. You know, final running list. So it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. You know, absolutely. And of course, they had fine words to say about uh, Judas Priest. I know there's been a little bit of backlash from some of the fans saying, "Do we really need another Greatest Hits album?" But you know, it's it's sort of an honor to hear what other people think of your music, especially it, people that you respect it, as well. It, that's true, that's true. It's just a, it's, it's another angle on it, you know. Um, I mean, people always ask us, you know, what's your favorite songs? And, well, you know, when we put a compilation album together, that's our favorite songs, you know. Right. Uh, it's, and it's just really interesting to, to you know, to, to get a different view, you know, to, to get the views of not just anybody, but, but your peers, you know. And it makes it... Uh, yeah, well, for us, it makes it sort of exciting, you know, and, uh, and, and, and you know, like I said, quite a bit of an honor. Now, last time you guys were out on a big world tour like this, it was for the, uh, the anniversary of the British Steel, which has long been considered by many fans the seminal Judas Priest album. Do you agree, or do you think a different album is really a, the band's more seminal representation? It was, it was a landmark in, in as much as... It, it, it all seemed to come together on that album. Up until then, 
I mean, most forms of music up until then, you know, were somewhat experimental, you know, there was no definite direction, you know, I mean, every metal before then didn't really exist, it only started in, you know, in the in the late 70s, early 80s, I mean, being called sort of heavy metal, if you know what I mean, before then it's progressive rock and heavy rock, you know, things like that, and uh, it all seemed to gel with, with uh, British Steel, and there seemed to be... Um, a definite direction there, you know, from there on in, you know, we, that, that was our path, you know. We, you know, went from side to side from time again, you know, with, with uh, you know, songs, um, albums like Turbo or, you know, when we experimented a bit with other things, but that was the path that was set, you know, and uh, and I, I think it's a landmark album for that, you know, apart from the, the, the great music that's on there, you know. Right. Is, is there a favorite Judas Priest album of yours, though? It's it's difficult, you know. I mean, th- th- everybody says, "Oh, yeah, my favourite album is, is is the next one." <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, if if I if I had to pick one, it, it it'd probably be Defenders, um, because th- there was a direct line from from British Steel to Defenders of the Faith. It was a step forward, a step forward, a step forward, all the, right the way up to to that album, um, which is the culmination of that little of that road, if you know what I mean. After that, of course, we went to Turbo. Which was somewhat exper- experimental, you know. Um, it, it, it made us fans, and I thought you totally lost us a few as well, you know. And yeah. then, of course, um, we came back with the harder red stuff with Run It Down and, and Painkiller. And, uh, and then, of course, Rob left, and there was a different direction there as well, you know. So, so if I had a big one, it, it would probably have to be, like I say, um, Defenders of the Faith. It was a pinnacle of that, you know. I, I, that's only my opinion, of course, you know. <laughs> Uh, see, and here I I might have thought you might have gone back to like Stained Class or Sad Wings of Destiny. So interesting choice. I'd never known if I'd never asked. So um, yeah. Well, getting back to the tour, is there some melancholy knowing that this will likely be the last time you perform in most of these cities? Um, not yet. <laughs> we're all we're all stuck, we're, we're all so wrapped up in it, you know. It's uh, we, we are we're still genuinely thoroughly enjoying what we do, you know. Um, so uh, that, that's distracting any sort of um, any sort of black moods or anything like that, you know. That that would probably come on the uh, you know like to say we, we we will carry on. Unfortunately, it will be the last time some people will get to see us in their area, you know. But we'll still, you know, we'll be going back to most of the countries we play in. But uh, we, we won't be doing, it for, you know, instead of doing sort of uh, 50 shows, we, we may only do 30, you know, or, or 20 maybe. Right. Um, or maybe even less, you know. So, um, you know, we're only really just trying to extend, like I say, extend the life of the band, um, slow down a little bit instead of coming to a full stop, you know. Something of a quasi-retirement, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> It, it, it is. I mean, let me. The thing is, we do enjoy it, and that's the point. At the end of every tour, you know, we've been at it for eighteen months, two years. My bass goes in the closet, and the door's shut, and think, right, that's it now. That's it. I'm going to have some great time. As you're walking by, you know, about a week later, you're walking past the closet, and you're looking at it. You know, about two weeks later, you, you know, you've got the, you, you're doing it again. After a month, you're just hankering to do it again. And uh, and that's probably why we, we cannot stop. You know, we'll, we'll we'll probably carry on until one of us drops. I should imagine. <laughs> so uh, it, 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 it's, it's such a, such an enjoyable process. You know, it'd be practically impossible to 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 stop of our own free will, if you know what I mean. Because there's still too much drive there. Now, on this tour, you guys are pay- playing a song from every album, including going all the way back to Rockerola. Um yeah. Uh, that had to be an arduous task, picking which songs, not so much which songs you were actually going to play from albums that you haven't played in, in, for, in ages, but which of the classics you would have to leave off to be able to do this set. That, that's a dilemma before every two we do. It, it's a nightmare because, as you say, to, to, if you put what, some sort of different song in, you've got to drop somebody's favorite, you know. Right. And... Uh, um, but it doesn't matter how much time we put into it and thought, there's always somebody that comes up after and says, oh, well, you didn't do my favourite song, whatever it is, you know. And it, it is, it, it is very, very difficult to do. Um, some songs, obviously, the, 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 the perennial evergreen favourites, I mean, you cannot drop those, or, you, you know, you get lynched probably if we did. Uh, but the other songs, you know, and it, it is difficult, yeah. We had to make way for, for songs that we hadn't done for a long time, 
and, and it seems that we've never done, you know, the dread skies, never satisfied, things like that, you know. Right. And it is, it's very difficult. Now, are you guys recording, I know you guys probably record every show, but are you guys going to do an Epitaph World Tour CD, DVD release later, so even, because there's still a lot of people, I'm, I'm here in Boise and you guys don't have a Boise date, although November 3rd is open if you guys want to add it. Are you guys thinking about uh, releasing something like that? We, 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 we definitely will, yeah. Um, we, we have recorded, um, we did a festival in London, the uh, the High Voltage Festival in London, and, and that was recorded and filmed. Um, I don't know what the quality is like uh, being a festival, you know, we didn't have our uh, complete lights and things like that, you know, so there's a few things missing. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, so we'll, 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 we'll see what that looks like, and if it's good enough, you know, we, we can we can release that. Uh, and there's a there's a hell of a lot of touring to do yet this time around, so um, we've got a, we've got plenty of time to get the cameras out and get the recording, you know, get the mobile out, and uh, and record more shows. In fact, it's recorded nearly every night anyway, you know. Exactly. The music part of it, we we we've, we've got Pro Tools on the desk, you know, so most things are are put down every night. So yeah, but they'll they'll definitely be something. They'll definitely be something. You guys are already working on new material for the next studio album. Uh, which is obviously going to yeah. be a ways away anyway, because you're going to be on tour for quite a while. But uh, what can you That's tell right. us? What can you tell us about the new material? Um, are you guys doing any writing on the road? Obviously, is Richie participating in this now? Yeah, well, he will be. Yes, um, there was three songs nearly completed, but that didn't include Richie. It was it was done before he came along. So. Um, it, that that'll have to be re-recorded at least in part, you know, to to, to fit him in. And uh, we will be, uh, we'll, we'll be, you know, we'll be writing with Richie as well. And uh, as you say, it'll be some time next year before we can get into the studio now, and um, and, and and get, you know, get 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 to work finishing it. But it'll it'll be it'll actually carry on from where we left off with um, Angela Retribution. Um, we, we've got our concept album out of the way now, so we'll uh, concentrate on, you know, classic priest metal. <laughs> 